Day 608 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian War. Juzzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. So starting off, we'll take a look at those Russian losses again, as currently Russia sits on more than 295,000 military personnel losses, still making for also another eight or 900 losses per day. Today, it sits on 810 in the past 24 hours. Then as for hardware losses, so 12 tanks, 24 APVs, and a regularly whopping 24 artillery. And not to mention the 28 fuel tanks and other various vehicles. And some of those vehicles, you, you have to see them to believe them. As we'll head across to the eastern Ukrainian map today to start off with, as Russia has been continuing its offensive operation efforts throughout many sectors of the Donbass, including Avdivka once again. And this is where things got a little bit strange, as Russia's latest attempts to encircle the front line town very much appeared to be carried out not with tanks, not with infantry fighting vehicles, but instead with soldiers in what appeared to be a never-before-seen entourage of Gaz A trucks. So the GAZ AA trucks. Not seen at least since World War II, that is. And if you don't know the Gaz AA pickup trucks, then think along the lines of the Ford Model T design styling which were what these vehicles were pretty much based off, with a manufacturer year that started in 1932. And in this footage, the Ukrainians are quite surprised as well, looking at the video, wondering if the Russian museum piece Convoy thought that it was immortal. Now, you can see the skinny tires on these things, the hood and the square cabin when you play it back over and over, which, which I did. Although, to be fair, an argument could be made uh, for it being the Gaz-51 models, produced in 1946 instead. But the mere fact that this is even a conversation related to Russia's army in 2023 is just one great, big, sad, embarrassing state of Russian affairs. For them being caught multiple, multiple times now, using older and older equipment in this war. So truly a disturbing development, it seems to be there. Then as for this region, so today Russia has been toying back and forth uh, at the railway line, not passing it. And it's just beyond uh, Krasnohorivka. And just for a bit of recent history at this location, Russia has held the town of Krasnohorivka since about March of this year, so a good six months. So they can't even claim it as a win in uh, this offensive or this series of offensive operations for the last two weeks. Now also, Russia would really like to climb up the, the top of that, uh, that mining waste heap, which someone, a Russian soldier, may have gotten up there and then run back down later on after putting, on a, uh, putting up a Russian flag, but still obviously very much in the grey zone. But I can't imagine any military stationing equipment there on a full-time basis, particularly due to now the usage of drones in modern warfare. They just have nowhere to run. But in the end, it's clear that uh, at this point, Russia will stop at nothing to gain as many hundreds or hundreds of more meters as they can to the north and to the south at such a tremendous cost of life for Russian personnel. And on that front, estimates vary, but it's uh, considered about three brigades worth of Russian personnel. Uh, we're talking four to 6,000 lives, Russian soldiers, members of the military, lost in this region in the past two weeks alone. Not to mention all of those hardware losses. And as for a bit of a relatable example to all of that there, a Russian telegrammer mentioned on one of the Russian soldiers that happened to return from Abdivka and returned with, quote, empty icy eyes after heavy battles. He also mentioned that the Avdivka strongpoint is hidden underground, and little Ukrainian activity is noticed on the surface. And he'd be right, but the way that it's being stated is almost as if uh, this is some sort of a newly discovered fact. 
and that the Russian army is just learning about this now, the hard way. Yet it's been well known about these deeply entrenched Ukrainian positions at this location for so, so long now. So just how is it that the Russian army is seemingly the last to find out? Well, certainly from a lack of military intelligence. Then, just for a hot second, we'll move a bit north, as meanwhile, from some recent Ukrainian footage, it appears some Ukrainian forces are just about 500 meters or so away from Bakhmut city itself. Then further south, so Russian troops have also reportedly been trying to cut off Marinka, which is a- another frontline town of the Donetsk Oblast that has long been a flashpoint of hostilities on the Eastern Front. And so the Ukrainian border defense in this region has noted more than the usual activity from Russian forces, but did state that the Russian forces haven't tried anything new in terms of tactics at this location, just more of the same really, where they're pulling up reserves from all over, trying as ever to push through Ukrainian defensive lines. But all of the Ukrainian held land near to Marinka has a similar defensive setup as Abdivka, or even like Vuladar to the south for that matter, so it's no easy push. Then somewhere in the east, actually really close by, at uh, Stepna, Ukrainian forces from the 72nd Mechanized Brigade hit a Russian TOS-1 thermobaric MLRS, so the multiple launch rocket system, as it prepares to fire, but uh, it never got the chance, and we've seen this before, it really packs uh, a punch of an explosion. Then I'll also give a brief mention to something that happened closer to maybe 48 hours ago now, as the popular Russian aviation adjacent telegram channel stating the loss of yet another Russian helicopter, this time an Mi-8. But once again, it was from friendly fire, Russia's own air defenses. And so this Telegram is clearly not happy about the situation, saying that the lessons are never learned, and that round and round, Russia goes, doomed to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. He also mentioned uh, that somehow, so when this happens, the deceased crews are always awarded the Order of Courage, and air defense crews are also awarded the Order of Courage. So based on that, Russia is obviously uh, attempting to cover up its own embarrassing failings. Then we'll head across to the most western and southern sector that we can find, or really the most west, I should just say, as the Ukrainian defense forces are still continuing to conduct a great deal of counter-battery fire, inflicting fire damage on the enemies in the rear, from the north bank uh, firing positions into the south. They've apparently really set themselves up there now. Now in the past it was more difficult for them to do so, because Russia back then, let's say a month, two months or more ago, was really able to concentrate uh, more shells, artillery shells and fire onto the very edge of the north bank, but appears that they've uh, in many ways uh, fallen back. Or better to say, their frontline artillery, for instance, has been uh, much more, more so destroyed than it ever was before. And also, Ukrainian units continue to maintain a presence inside Krinky, just on the south bank there as well. Now, the AFU themselves are keeping a lot of this information uh, really quiet, so operational silence in this sector. But we know about Ukraine's activities in this uh, region from all of the, the, the multiple, multiple Russian sources, all their reports, all the footage they upload. And the AFU are particularly silent when they gear up with new offensive goals in mind. Then we'll head on right down south today as it seems like it's never a dull day once again in Russian occupied Crimea. Uh, seven hours ago, there was a reported uh, drone attack in Sevastopol. Uh, 14 hours ago, it, there was a larger explosion reported there as well. Then about 24 hours ago, uh, quite a significant explosion once again in Sevastopol. And so consistent and ongoing events like these really force the Russian army to go much more on the defensive in the region. Then we'll head across to some news for today. So there's quite a big news story going around right now. 
that Vladimir Putin is alleged to have uh, gone into cardiac arrest on Sunday night, followed by being resuscitated. After also being convulsively arched while lying on the floor, rolling his eyes. Again, allegedly. The, the source appears a little bit suspect, although this comes amid multiple claims regarding the ill health of the president. Although, hey, let's say that in some fantasy scenario, this did actually occur and Putin kicked the bucket. The implications would be such that under the, the Russian constitution, the power of the presidency goes to the Russian prime minister, currently held by a man by the name of Mikhail Mishustin. And you've probably never heard of him before. And perhaps for good reason, being that he's not ever really been very vocal at all on the events of the Ukraine war, which either makes him not fond of the war, or just another easily controllable yes-man within the Russian political system that Putin has gutted any serious opposition to. But hey, I think we can all agree, and the main thing that I'd have to say is that at least it's not this guy right here, the sociopathically nuclear-threatening Medvedev, who frightfully so used to be the Russian PM and was so between the years of, uh, most recently, 2012 to 2020. So, it looks like Earth dodged that bullet, thankfully. Then in some other news, so we'll move across to some Ukrainian hardware news. So, the Ukrainian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dmitry Kuleba, announced good news coming from Germany today. Then also stating that he won't spoil it yet, uh, but we'll hear about it very soon. Probably near to the time that I upload this video. And before I get into a two-second speculation about that, uh, it's probably good to, to mention here that Germany is slated to overtake Japan soon to become the third largest economy in the world. True story. Second place is China. First place is the USA. Which means Germany will certainly both look to become and be expected to take much more of a leadership role on the world stage, and certainly at least from a NATO standpoint. But back to the news coming any moment now. There's no guarantees of Ukraine receiving the long-requested uh, Taurus air-launched missiles from Germany, which have a range of about 500 kilometers or 310 miles, and that's the bare minimum range, as it's expected to be closer to 430 or so miles in reality. But time will tell. And hey, just a week ago, it was the Attackums. Then moving to some Russian economy adjacent news. So in Perm within Russia, it's just north of uh, Kazakhstan, a landing Boeing 737 plane failed to break in time and rolled off the runway. Now, nobody was hurt in the incident and uh, due to the lack of spare parts, the brakes are typically the first thing to fail. So the, the reverse thrusters take over among other options to slow the plane down to a stop. But I must say, Russia, stop using sanctioned and unmaintained Western commercial airline planes like the Boeings and the Airbuses. It's only going to end up bad for you, going to end up bad for the passengers, because it's only a matter of time before something much worse happens. Then you decide to blame the West. And I, for one, am going to find that Russian argument very difficult to accept. Then moving to some other news, the US seeks to confiscate uh, a 300 million US dollar yacht of Russian oligarch Suleiman uh, Karamov. So US prosecutors have filed a civil forfeiture lawsuit against the super yacht named Amadia, which is owned by the sanctioned oligarch. And at this stage, most if not all Russian oligarchs have been sanctioned. Even Putin's mistress has been sanctioned. But with news like this, I'm somehow reminded of 12 years ago when construction began on the new railway infrastructure for Tuva, which is in central Russia. 49 billion rubles from the federal budget were allocated and all they ever had to show for it was a model of the railway road and some real estate that was purchased in Moscow by the managers of the project. Corruption at the highest levels, which of course, ended up absolutely going into assets such as Russian oligarch super yachts. 
Then a couple of super quick funnies to round it all off for today, guys. So there's a top-notch Russian story going around uh, in their media at the moment about Ukrainian intelligence chief Bordanov being captured in Avdivka. And I'm sure the emotionless Bordanov would be very pleased, as always, to come to learn of this information. It's also a poor quality fake image of him being held, too. Even I could have done a better job than that. But hey, he's also been previously, uh, well, been announced by Russian media as being somehow eliminated or KIA in the field as well uh, last year. Around this time, in fact, last year. Then in a final quick funny to round it all off today, guys. So it seems there's a special, <laughs> sorry, um, there's a special garbage operation in Russia right now. As multiple garbage trucks are dumped, uh, dumping tons of garbage next to the freeway on the outer ring highway in Moscow and then just disappear. So it looks like Russian budget cuts are starting to hit waste management now too. That could turn into one very stinky city. So that's it for today guys. Thanks again for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe if not already, and uh, yeah, do leave a like if you can, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers!